Okay, I have a column here. It is A36 steel. It's W8 by 15. I've got the um, uh, Appendix B information right here. We'll go over that in a little bit. And I'm basically, I want to figure out um, what P is going to make this buckle or yield. Okay, so we're going to start with buckling. Okay, uh, and when I go into buckling, we will remember that our equation for buckling, P critical equals pi squared E over I times KL squared. Okay, so I plug all of that stuff in and I get pi squared E for steel. Uh, this will be in PSI will be 29 times 10 to the 6th. We can look that up in the back of the book. Now I, okay, so my eyes are right here and here. So I got this eye and what is my other eye? This eye right here. Those are my eyes, okay, in each direction of my um, my wide flange beam. I want, it's going to buckle on the, the weaker axis, so I'm going to use that 3.41 value right there okay so that's going to be 3.41 and again that's going to be uh, inches to the fourth so I looked that up in the table for the cross section that I've got I'm going to divide that by K which is 2 for fixed free times 8 times 12 because I want to get everything in inches so 8 feet times 12 whole thing squared like that from that I find that the critical load for buckling is 26.5 kips. Okay, so that's the load that's required to make it buckle. Now, we have to determine if that's the actual load uh, or not. Uh, and to do that, I need to go ahead and calculate the um, yield stress or the maximum stress due to an eccentric load, okay, which is the secant formula. It's a very long formula. Bear with me while I write it down where it's the force over the area plus one, uh, times 1 plus 1 plus the e sec eccentricity, C, which is the distance from the neutral axis, R, which is the radius of gyration, times the secant of KL over 2R times the square root of EAP. Okay, so big ugly equation. Okay, we've got most of the stuff we need in here. The main thing to remember on all of this is to use radians. In fact, if you look at the top of the, if you look at the top here, I have used radians to remind you to use radians. Okay, Rem and remind myself for that matter, right? Because we're using secant, right? Usually we're using degrees, but in order for this equation to work, we need to be in radians in our calculator. So make sure you switch your mode uh, for your calculator. So I'm going to go through and start plugging values in here. Okay, so I'm going to get uh, 26,500 for P. The area, okay, that is given right here. That's the area of the uh, wide flange beam that I've got. So that's 4.44. Okay, uh, times 1 plus the eccentricity, which is 1 inch. Okay, C is the, well, half of the depth, right? This is the depth here, right? Uh, it's Y flange being 8 by 15, so again, that's got essentially a depth of 8, 8.11 to be exact. Okay, C is going to be half of that because it comes from the neutral axis, so it's 8.11 divided by 2. Okay. Uh, all over R. Now, R, now, this is the radius of gyration. Now, this is going to be around the stiffer axis. This is about the other. It'll buckle in one direction and fail by um, yielding, yield stress in the other direction. Okay? So I use the I when dealing with the um, buckling. When dealing with the secant formula, I need to use R on the other axis, which is going to be that 3.29. And that's just going to be in inches. That's the radius of gyration. So that's going to be 3.29 squared times the secant, 
of k, which is 2, right, uh, fixed free, l, which is 8 times 12. Again, I want that in inches, so I take the 8 feet times uh, 12 inches, divided by 2 times r, which again is 3.29, just like it was before, same axis, it's the stiffer axis that I need to use here, divided by the square root of p, which is again 26500, zero, zero, divided by e, which is going to be 29 times 10 to the 6th, and then a again is 4.44 so this whole equation and you can go look in the book or in previous uh, videos to see exactly where this comes from but it comes to the fact that I not only have compression but I also have a slight bit of bending moment that happens from that eccentric load because I've got that bending so it's it's just a doesn't look like a simplification but it's a single equation that takes into account both of those for the situation we got when I plug all those values in, make sure I'm in radians in my calculator, I get the value of um, 8.41 KSI. Okay. So under the load that I have right here, I recognize that I get a yield stress or a, a stress of 8.41 the yield stress for steel is 36 KSI so I'm below that which is good okay so that is actually true okay so you go through you calculate for the buckling and then prove to yourself that hey this does not um, it doesn't yield Okay. If this had been above that yield stress, then I would have had to basically set, well, I would have had to solve for P, which is a pretty complicated thing. So let's hope it, it's always the case. Uh, because again, P is with it, both outside and inside that secant. Makes that, uh, you'd have to use, well, I would have to use a calculator to figure that out. Anyway, um, calculate buckling, plug in the secant formula to make sure that it is below uh, the yield stress.